All right, so for my project, I'm going to talk about bloodhound health management and the most common problems that people who own bloodhounds run into. So the first one that we haven't ran into with her yet is bloat and gastric torsion. Um, and it's very painful and life-threatening because it, um, the stomach just distends with gas, so the gas can't get released from their stomach. Um, and so then the torsion is when the stomach begins to twist and it causes the esophagus and the intestines to twist with it, which will narrow and close. So then the gas can't get out. Um, so for prevention with her, you can do your surgery, which involves like sewing the stomach in place, but they have to be one and a half to two years old before most vets will do it. Um, so we haven't done it with her just because we don't like the way we feed her is we use a raised feeder and so it helps that she doesn't eat quickly because when dogs eat really fast and then do a lot of exercise that's when the gas starts accumulating in their stomach and then the treatment for it is emerger emergency surgery and so hopefully we don't run that without that. I got a comment to make you know the prevention uh, does anybody know the technical term of that yes gastropexy and if you do it beforehand prophylactic gastropexy whenever you see pexy that means you're suturing something gastro stomach and you're doing it to prevent so that's a beauty you know because that reminded me when you were saying that yeah uh, prophylactic gastropexy afterwards it would be gastropexy So here's just a picture of it, and that just shows the normal stomach, and then this one shows it as it's bloating, and then it starts to twist. So you can see how like the gas is accumulating where the red is, and that's why it becomes a problem to them. So the next one is dysplasia, and you can either have hip dysplasia or elbow dysplasia. The most common is the hip with the genetic disorders, and so if you choose to breed her, you have to have all of your breeding stock screened first. And then um, they do that through the Orthopedic Foundation for Animals. And then elbow dysplasia leads to arthritis in the elbow joint. Um, there's really no prevention for it just because it's genetics. But the treatment for it is that you usually have to have surgery if it gets really bad. Or you can give them supplements. Um, and you just really have to talk to your vet about your options that you have because they can tell you more about it. And so this just shows you like how your normal hips are supposed to look like and then the, or the inflammation starts and then you can get the arthritis. So we need to get this a lot in here. Uh, ear infections are really common because they have long heavy ears so dirt just gets trapped in them. And since we take her out hunting in the woods, then she just gets all kinds of stuff in her ears all the time. So what we look for is a foul odor and her ears will start to really stink. Um, and then you can just see debris in the ear canal and if she scratches or shakes her head. So it's caused by yeast and bacteria and that's why it smells. And the treatment for her is we usually clean her ears about two to three times a day for a week. Um, and then if we take her out, we'll usually just clean them out really quick and just wipe them out. Or you can do an oral antibiotic and a topical ointment, which we had to do when we first got her because the breeder, for some reason, she had a really bad ear infection, and so we had to get that taken care of quick. And so that just shows you that it'll be red, and that just shows you that it has a lot of irritation. Uh, the other thing they can have is their eyelids will roll outwards. Um, every time we take her to the vet, we make sure to check for that just because I don't want her to have droopy eyelids and it causes a lot of infections. But you see it mostly in older dogs, so as she gets older, we'll have to start checking her more frequently. And the treatment is antibiotic ointment or topical cream. You have to clean them out a lot when you can get surgery to um, help with it. So. You see this in like a lot of older hounds and basset hounds especially where their eyelids just droop. And then the other one is when their eyelids are inverted. And you see this in dogs that are um, less than one year old. And the treatment is antibiotics, artificial tears, or surgery. So we haven't seen that with her yet, but 
we'll just have to keep working for it. You ready for questions? Yeah. Any questions about uh, Dixie, the beautiful uh, bloodhound that's walking around in the room? <clears throat> Made some great points. Yeah, it's uh, quite a deal. Yeah, okay. have you had any? I, was, I guess I was going to ask you about what do you flush out the ears when you come back from hunting? We just use an ear solution. So our vet just told us to go to like Specs and Mini Pet Store and just buy whatever solution okay. they have. So commercially available over the counter. So we squirt that in our ears and then we usually put like really small cotton balls in there and just swish her ears around. She doesn't really like it, but mm -hmm. I mean. You Does that do a good job of prevention then, the flushing mm -hmm. after you come back? Um, usually her ears aren't that dirty, okay. so it depends. Mm -hmm. Because usually what you buy over the counter doesn't compare to what you get by from a veterinarian prescription wise. It's just that's one I think one frustrating thing I have. Anything over the counter is usually kind of just a weak little attempt at cleaning something up, and it's not really very powerful. Okay, other questions, comments? Yeah, mm -hmm. I have heard of gastric torsion before. I think it was in your two thirty class. And I thought it was in more common in deeper chested dogs. How common is it in a bloodhound? It's like Great Danes, Dalmatians, do they have that deep chest? Or? Yeah. Okay, so I had a bloodhound when I was little, and she ended up getting it three times because we used to have her, and then we gave her away because we just didn't have enough land. And they would feed her before she went out to run, and she kept flipping <laughs> her stomach. And they had surgery on it three times, and then that was just like, I can't like they can't do it again so the preventive surgery really helps but I mean if you don't feed them before you take them out for a heavy exercise like we won't feed her if we're going out hunting she doesn't get to eat till we're done but usually when we're done is her usual meal time anyway so yeah you never feed a dog and then take it to exercise or run or anything like that never see the thing is about the chest it's their chest is deep but it's also narrow and that sets you up like uh, the Great Dane. You know, they're big chested, but it's very narrow. A Newfoundland is very deep, but it's also very wide. So if it does twist spontaneously, it has a much better chance of spontaneously going back. Whereas a narrow, if it's twisted, it can't get back by itself. So Great Dane, and I'm not sure, I think Great Dane is the number one maybe on the list. Uh, but Mastiffs, I have friends that have, anybody else had know what's also on the list? Like Greyhounds. Greyhounds, Dobermans. 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 They do the uh, prophylactic on any like working dog. So even if it's like a lab or and that's like the thing, like it doesn't have to be breed specific. But yeah. if they're no, working dogs, then they yeah. do it. We actually had in the vet office the other day a corgi had GDP. A corgi. Really? A corgi. <laughs> a corgi. I think yeah. that gets, yeah, that should be in the textbook someplace because yeah. that's. Yeah, I guess theoretically any dog it could can, have yeah, it. Yeah, any dog can yeah. have it. But it's, there's more. Propensity on those bigger narrow dogs. 